Hi, this is Joe Chambers. Welcome to Musicians Hall of Fame Backstage, the Vault Series. Today's show is another clip from an interview we did back in 2009 up in my office at our original museum location with the great Chip Young. Chip moved here from Atlanta with Jerry Reed back in the 60s and was one of the top session guitarists. In this interview, he talks about his best bud, Jerry Reed, and some of the things they did together and both being thumb pickers and and playing together as a duo and and just the camaraderie that they had. Was, there was a particular phone call that went on for about a week between Jerry and, and Chip that was hilarious, and you'll see that, which reminds me of... And I was sitting in the same office where this interview was done, and Jerry would call me toward the end of his life. He'd call me a few times every week and just in the afternoon and just want to chat. And it wasn't all about music at all. It was actually... He wanted to let me know, and I'm sure he did the same conversation with a lot of his friends, that there was a lot more to life than being a movie star and a, and a, and a music icon and, and uh, that family and, and God was the most important thing. Hope you enjoy it. If you do, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our content. Once again, Chip Young. Hello, I'm Chip Young. Uh I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I kind of grew up with Jerry Reed and Joe South and Ray Stevens, all the hellions of Atlanta down there. Anyway, uh, I worked in the band with Joe South and the Believers in the, in the late 50s, middle to late 50s. And I met Jerry Reed and I engineered for Bill Lowry at a studio down there called NRC. And um, I got drafted after I'd been working there for about a year. And uh, um, Jerry Reed wrote letters to me all the time when I was in, in the service and telling me about things that were happening here in Nashville. And he said, when you get out of the service, I want you to come up here and go to work with me. And when I did, he moved me up here and we worked as a duo for about a year out on the road, playing both of us thumb pickers, you know. And uh, Back when I was engineering, Jerry would come by the studio at night and, and would put down a bunch of demos for Chet. And Jerry would talk, talk to Chet and tell him how, how he was playing it, you know. Now, Chet, I'm, I'm playing this in the C position and I'm doing this, this, and this, and this, you know. And uh, Chet just loved getting those things from Jerry. Cause it was something different. Chet told me later on in life that he would have quit playing guitar if it had been for Jerry. Said he'd done everything that was possible that he knew how to do. And Jerry comes along, and shows him a brand new way of doing things. You know, it sparked his interest again, and uh, Chet got a renewed interest in playing the guitar again. He said all because of Jerry. I, I played a lot of golf with Chet. You know, just he was just a wonderful man. Rode it. Beck would always ride with Bergen White and and Bergen and Bob Beckham and Chet and myself would play. And uh, Chet and I were always rode together. We always just talked about music and the Brown Ferry Four and uh, Travis, Moore Travis, and all these great players. You know, we just talked about music all the time. He told me, as a matter of fact, that album I gave you. He told me of, of all the thumb picking albums. This blew me out of the golf cart one day. He said, "This your album is the best of all of them." He said, "It's just," he said, "It's just right where thumb picking ought to be." Not complicated, it's just simple and enjoyable to listen to, you know. I did a show last weekend, getting off the subject again, but uh, with uh, Eddie Pennington, the thumb picker I was telling you about, Travis player. Uh, Bonnie Taggart was there, Bonnie Rasmussen, Chet's PR lady, you know, at one time. She called Leona while we were playing, I was playing Old by Jingo. She called Leona and, and uh, Leona said, get him to play it again. So she, she asked, Bonnie asked me if I'd play it again for Leona. And she held the phone up while, she, while Leona listened. She said, oh, boy, that's good. That reminds me of Chet so much. That's great. I had a little woodworking shop out behind my house, and, and Jerry uh, Reed called me one day and said, let's build a model airplane. He used to build model airplanes when he was younger, you know. And, and uh, I said, okay. And so we, we took my shop, I cleaned it up, and we, I put a big table out there, and we built a six, 
foot wingspan model airplane, Piper Cub, huge airplane, you know, to build. And um, while, we, while we were building it one day, I said, Jerry, I'd like to learn some instrumental of yours that's, that nobody else does it. You know, it's not recorded or something. And he said, well, I've got something I'll, I'll teach you. So, as you know, Jerry had non-essential tremors. He, his hands shook all the time, not from palsy or anything, but it, it's just a heredity disease that he had. And uh, he finally showed it to me, and I said, well, I think I got it, you know, and I, I kind of figured out where everything was, and I'd, I'd woodshed it for three or four days, and I'd call him and play it for him, and he'd, I'd say, well, he said, no, you're not doing the thumb right, and slam the phone down. And I'd say, well, what's going on here, you know? So I'd call him back a little bit later, and, uh, hey, I think I got it now. But well, hey, I got something I want you to hear. Clink. He'd hang up the phone, and this went on for a week. I mean, every night I'd call him and say, I, I, think, I, I think I've got it better now. I've, I've got it figured out. Well, i got something I want you to hear. Clink, he'd hang that phone up every time I'd call him. Hey, let me, let me play something for you, Clink. <laughs> Just every time. So I quit calling him. It's <laughs> <laughs> probably what he wanted anyway. <laughs> No, Jerry was my best buddy. He was absolutely my best buddy. Hmm. I miss him every day. There's things I'd like to ask him right now. Hmm. What was that song that, that, um, that Jerry showed you that he kept hanging up on you on? Oh, it's... Uh... <laughs> I guess I'm the only one that ever, that ever learned it. Did he have a name for it? Nuh uh. Well, he was going to call it something Blackwater Swamp or something. I don't know what. But, it, you know, he passed away before he. How, how long ago did he write that? Uh, we, that built, we built that plane probably in 95, 96, somewhere along there. That's cool. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It, it's fun to play. A lot of, you know, it, he, he uh, he's the... All that stuff. Wild man, but then he could turn around and play uh, Georgia on my mind with some of the most beautiful chords you'd ever heard in your life, you know, and melodies. Whew. Just incredible. <laughs> 